friends, welcome to Love and Life's Journey. I'm Chantel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's DIY video is something that I am really excited about because I have needed something new above my fireplace for a long time. It's just been bare. We have had a picture up there for a long time. It was a wildlife a print of, from a painting that a friend had done a long time ago and uh, it was time for a change. So we had taken it down at Christmas time to put up Christmas decor. And after Christmas, I took, took the Christmas decor down, but I didn't put the painting back up. And so it's just been bare. It's been driving me crazy because I wasn't sure what I wanted to put up there, but I finally decided on a project and it's really budget friendly. I'm really excited to show you what I did. It's nothing new. I'm sure that you have seen people making wreaths using hula hoops from Dollar Tree, but I'm just going to show you my version. And I am making it more of a farmhouse style because that is what my house is decorated in. But this is a project that just with a few really simple tweaks and changes, you could make this fit any decor. And I will talk about that as I go through the steps and give you some ideas for how you could change it up. So let's not wait any longer. Let's jump in and get started. For this project, I will be using a hula hoop from Dollar Tree. And this is the smaller size. It is about 20 inches in diameter. If you want to make a larger wreath, you can use the bigger hula hoop as well. I will also be using one package of these five gallon paint stir sticks. These are from Walmart. I think they're about $1.47. And I'll be using this wall decal from Dollar Tree. I will be using some jute twine. This is some I got at Walmart. It's a large roll for $3.47 I think. You can also get smaller rolls at Dollar Tree. And I think you would probably need at least two for this project if you use the small ones from Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using two of these large eucalyptus stems from Walmart. These were $3 a piece, but they're a real good size, so I only need two of them. And I'm going to use some artificial flowers. These are some that we actually used in my daughter's wedding to decorate the arch. And so they have special meaning and I have them just laying around. So I'm going to use these, but you could use some from Dollar Tree or Walmart. To start, I am going to take the foil tape off of the outside of the hula hoop and I'm using an X-Acto knife just to lift up the edge and then it just peels up. It was a little hard to get started, but after that it just peeled right off. And you probably could leave this tape on, but I decided to take it off since I'm going to be gluing the twine to the hula hoop. I wanted it to glue directly to the plastic hoop, but you could use the just the hoop with this nice dark charcoal gray color just the way it is. So I want mine to be a little bit more farmhouse, so I am going to use twine. And I did decide to take the beads out of the hula hoop it probably wouldn't matter because it's going to be hanging up on the wall and not being moved around, but I just decided it was easy to do. So I just pulled the ends apart and dumped the little beads out and threw them away. I am hot gluing my twine to start off. I'm gluing it right where the hoop uh, goes together at that seam, uh, just because I think that will help hold that together. And then uh, I just added a fairly generous amount of glue at the beginning and then I am just wrapping the twine and I did not glue it again until I got to the very end. Wrapping the twine can be a little bit tedious. It does take quite a while to do, but I found that it was easiest if I left the twine on the roll and then just wrapped that around and around the hoop. Uh, like about five or six times then I pulled the twine uh, tight and uh, just continued that process all the way around the hoop.
and once I got to the end then I just trimmed off the twine and hot glued it down. So if you did not want a farmhouse look you could totally spray paint this hoop in like a metallic if you want it to be more glam or even just a white or a black if you want it to look a little more modern. Um, there's a lot of options for making this fit your decor. So next I'm going to assemble my paint stir sticks into a sign for my wreath and I'm going to lay them kind of in the position that I want and mark the end of them to trim them off because they are just a little bit too long. And for this I will be using my miter box and saw. I'll put the link to that in the description box below. This is a great tool to have in your crafting stash uh, for small projects. And now you can see they fit perfectly and don't worry about those ends of the stir sticks that are smaller because they're going to be covered up with the florals. Next I'm going to use some ivory colored chalk paint by Waverly. I get this at Walmart and I'm going to paint my stir sticks and then I'll be using some truffle colored chalk paint uh, just to dry brush to make them look a little bit aged. I did end up putting two coats of paint on these. It probably wasn't necessary but I felt like it, it just needed a little bit more than the one coat and I didn't worry about painting the backs of these. Once the paint is dry I'm going to flip these over and I'm going to use some craft sticks just to glue across the backs to um, hold them together and I'm just trimming them with scissors and then hot gluing them to the back making sure that my edges are lined up and that the stir sticks are uh, together tightly. So once I got all the craft sticks glued on I flipped this over and realized that I had my paint stir sticks in the wrong order. So I ended up having to pry off the craft sticks and that was not very easy but uh, I used the heat gun to help me get those off and then I had to put them in the correct order and flip them over. The problem I had the first time was that I flipped each stick individually instead of flipping them all together at one time and so uh, I got that figured out here and got it all put together but you know sometimes things just happen and you gotta roll with it. So now that I have that together I am going to do my dry brushing and I am just using that truffle brown paint. You can use any uh, color of darker paint. It could be a gray, it could be a brown or even a black but uh, you just want to get a very little bit on a dry paintbrush and then wipe the excess off of the brush and then lightly brush across your project uh, just to leave a little bit on the project and this gives it an aged look. Now I'm going to attach the wall sticker to my sign and I picked this up at Dollar Tree. They have a lot of different styles. I really liked the looks of this one and so um, when I put this on I am cheating it over to the right hand side a little bit because um, my greenery is going to go on the left hand side and I don't want it to cover up the word so instead of centering it on the sign I'm moving it over to the right a little bit. Now since there is a little bit of shine or gloss to this and I want it to look a little bit more farmhouse I'm going to use some matte spray and I am going to spray a couple coats of that on my sign and that will help take a little bit of the sheen away from it. It's not so shiny. Mm -hmm. 
Once that matte sealer is dry, then I'm going to use my hot glue gun and just glue that sign onto the hoop. Next I'm going to lay out my greenery and my flowers onto the hoop and decide uh, the placement of them. And then I'm just going to be attaching them with some pieces of jute twine. Um, I think that will blend in well with my hoop. You could use zip ties or floral wire or any type of wire or string. Um, but for this particular project I thought the jute twine would be a good way to go. I did leave the long ends of my florals and greenery sticking out. Um, that will be the last thing that I do is to take care of those ends, but I want to make sure that I have them all placed properly and that the ends are long enough that they won't just slip out after I tie them. So once I'm happy with the way it looks, I'm going to kind of fold those ends along the hoop and tie them, um, leaving about a four or five inch uh, length of the stems uh, just so that I can tie it in a couple of places and it'll be nice and secure. And then I'm going to trim off the excess with some wire cutters. And I really liked how the twine looked wrapped around the center where my florals met right there at the sign. So I took another a little bit longer piece of twine and wrapped it around multiple times just to give it a little bit more of an accent. And then I tied it on the back and gave it a little bit of hot glue to secure it. And that is it. My wreath is finished and I love how it looks. You know, I saw some wreaths this size on Etsy for over $100. I spent about $15 to make this one and I love it and I think it turned out great. I hope you enjoyed this project. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel to grow. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and stick around. Don't forget to set your notifications so that YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos so that you don't miss any DIYs to come. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day.